Uh, good evening, friends, and I hope you are having a good evening because uh, obviously uh, this is not the uh, happiest uh, weekend uh, of our lives uh, on the territory of the Russian Federation uh, because of the terrorist act at uh, Crocus City Hall. And uh, obviously this is sort of one of these um, situations where you kind of have to uh, talk about this. There's kind of, uh, t to be honest, uh, on the one hand, I'd kind of like to not discuss this. But you kind of have to. It's kind of the elephant in the room, uh, as the expression goes. And so let's discuss it. So hopefully I can try to discuss this in a way that you haven't seen in other places. Uh, because that's one of the reasons why people uh, give a hoot about some of the things I do. Because they come with from a very different um, perspective. In fact, I was just on uh, Joe Rose's channel. You may know uh, Joe Rose. That's expat American. Um, and I told them this story, but I think it bears repeating. Because... Um, I recently did a uh, interview for Russian media ab about this event. Obviously it's recently because the, uh, event in question just happened recently, but, uh, it was, I think very poignant because, uh, you know, the, the interviewers, and again, it's, uh, one of these more sort of, what's one of the reasons why, if you notice how I'm kind of a, a bit of a jerk sometimes, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, and sometimes I might seem kind of on edge. Uh, it's because certain things like this happen. So anyways, why is Tim a, a bit of a uh, jerk face? Uh, this was this interview, and they kind of asked me this uh, very long-winded question that really tried to box me into a corner to saying, you know, like, uh, well, why uh, does um, do the, the people in uh, Washington, the mainstream media, uh, why do they confirm this terror attack? Why would anyone, uh, you know, uh, do stuff like this? Uh, so on and so forth. Just basically backing me into the corner, trying to get me to say yes the mainstream media in Washington are liars. I'm an American citizen. Uh, I am uh, the useful idiot of the day, uh, and uh, I approve this message. Uh, that's kind of what they were trying to get at me. And, um, you know, we kind of then went into the whole logic of, like, well, well why would you do this? Uh, why would someone do this kind of thing? And I said, well, the objective is to create, uh, you know, to try to divide Russian society and to uh, erode uh, the power base, you know, to make it so that way there could eventually be some kind of regime change here. That's why someone would ultimately want to finance uh, this kind of terrorism. Uh, because remember, uh, if this is supposedly uh, certain uh, Islamic terrorist groups, well, have any of these uh, really hardcore terrorist groups ever actually converted that many people? Um, I don't know. Uh, I do know that when uh, NATO has bombed their countries and murdered them and, you know, forced a lot of people to rally around something, very often they rally around Islam. But I don't remember too many conversions uh, coming from um, uh, this this type of behavior. So there's, of course, some because there's a few, uh, there's some very violent and brutal people out there, but um, they're kind of few and far between. And sometimes that type of person doesn't really want to change their mind. But so anyways... Um, the, the kind of logic, the, the, the host of this radio station. So essentially it was like, well, well, that, that can't be what you're saying is a lie because, uh, there was just an election and the president received 85% or 87% of the vote. That's not possible. How could, how could someone do that? I'm like, because on their piece of paper in their offices, it says that he's unpopular and it says that they need to sow the seeds of discontent within Russia. And my friends, why do I talk so blazon brazenly about this? Because another thing this Russian radio program didn't understand is that the entire alternative media blamed uh, Western three-letter organizations, be they more American-flavored ones, be they more British-flavored ones, uh, the kind of organizations that Donald Trump referred to sort of as the, the deep state uh, immediately. And, uh, and this is another thing that's very frustrating about living in Russia and why I'm half nuts is because I have to year after year after year we hear about how the American media and the Americans think this when the entire alternative media after this uh, terrorist attack happened at Crocus City Hall, the entire alternative media that's in English because obviously it's not like um, my friends. I wish I could be uh, so brilliant as to uh, read Arabic news and Arabic Chinese news and Chinese German news and German and so on. Unfortunately, I am one man with one mind and my time is limited. But it came to the English alternative media. They all 100 percent just immediately like, yeah, it's 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 the deep state. It smells the deep state. It is. So I was kind of uh, uh, bothered by that on, um, on 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 multiple fronts. It was uh 
a very, very kind of frustrating interview. So anyways, uh, I always like to tell you guys what uh, the Russian media kind of looks like from the inside without the, you know, sort of translating it for you because Russians behave very differently when they're speaking in English. And I think that that's a, a very good example of it. Now, uh, one other thing that you might find a, a bit of a different view on this that might make it worth listening to this live stream uh, is that I do think that ultimately what is probably going to come uh, happen, which is usually not the case. Usually, uh, if some sort of uh, terrorist attack happens within Russia, it doesn't really do anything or change society. It's just bad. You know, it's not used as some sort of catalyst uh, to make a, a Patriot Act. Uh, that has not been the case uh, in modern Russian history and in the Soviet Union. That wasn't the case because there really wasn't a lot of uh, this kind of thing in the Soviet Union. And uh, when it, something did happen, they tended to just sort of make it uh, vanish into the hole that was created by the Soviet Union, basically having a very lockstep media. So uh, this might be actually the, the sort of exception to the rule because uh, there's definitely been a big battle, which I've kind of taken a part in about uh, maybe two opinions, uh, maybe two and a half opinions about what immigration should look like. Uh, the easiest opinion to say is the sort of half opinion, which you don't hear from many people, is that Russia should just completely shut its doors and lock itself down and no immigration of any kind, maybe not even through marriage. There is that that opinion, but it's kind of rare. It's a more of a very small minority opinion. Uh, then we get into the opinion then that uh, people like myself share that uh, Russia needs to uh, essentially play the same game that many other countries have, have, have played in the past and try to attract uh, the best of the best or at least a lot of middle class people uh, to come here from other countries um, because every uh, talented middle class person uh, who is assimilatable, that's the key thing, who is assimilatable, gained means that the other side essentially loses that. And if Russia is actually in a soft World War III against the other side, well, you can see how that goes. That's <laughs> That kind of makes sense. And also, uh, after hearing, after years and years and years of Russians whining to me about how awful it was that the West stole all the great uh, talented aristocrats of the Russian Empire after the revolution and how awful it was that the West stole all the great talents of the Soviet Union uh, in the 1990s, um, maybe it's time for Russia to steal back. I don't know. That's kind of the, the uh, position I think that would yield the best results for Russian society. Although, to be honest, I actually at this point, um, having been so frustrated with uh, trying to actually uh, influence uh, from within, even now uh, being on a committee in the State Duma, which is it's definitely an honor, um, but I'm so frustrated. I actually wouldn't even really mind if they just went with the opinion of we don't immigrate anyone. <laughs> At least it would be easy. At least it would be clear. At least it would give us a very concrete road to go down, you know, uh, because I despise uh, the, uh, one thing that governments do that I absolutely despise and I think is very um, tyrannical, as Alex Jones would probably put it, is when something's maybe possible and legal to do, but you still can't do it. And that's kind of the whole thing, as many of you know, uh, what immigrating to Russia is like. It's like, well, in theory you can, but in reality you can't. And I do not do not approve of that uh, methodology. That is terrible. Uh, and uh, yeah. Now, I, I, I skipped mentioning probably the uh, dominant uh, opinion uh, for a long time it is definitely the opinion of a lot of people in the powers that be is that uh, Russia needs cheap labor. And that's where what the whole thing related to a lot of people from Tajikistan and Uzbekistan coming to Russia comes from, uh, because those countries are very desperately poor, and uh, there's not a lot of work there, and so people come here to be migrant laders, laborers. Excuse me. Uh, you'll even notice that the Western press uh, and some people sort of anecdotally mentioned that, like uh, Mariupol, the city in the uh, south of the former Ukraine, uh, that the Russians had to blow up uh, to get into the Azovstal uh, factory to root out all of their, uh, wonderful, uh, uh, gentlemen with swastikas, um, was rebuilt. Uh, so the, the, the rumor was that it was rebuilt by Arabs and, but that was sort of a mis thing, uh, miscommunication that it was actually more Muslims from central Asia, uh, who all sort of rebuilt that. So a lot of the, uh, massive explosion of, uh, construction in Russia, despite the fact that construction is more expensive than it has been in the recent past, uh, the amount of construction, at least according to uh, a certain Vladimir Vladimirovich, um, is going at full speed ahead. And as we're actually in Russia constructing more square meters 
of housing than even at the height of the post-World War II Reconstruction during Khrushchev, also known as Khrushchev, if you live here. So, um, kind of interesting, and I, 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 we, we can see that maybe there are some benefits uh, to uh, all this sort of um, migrant labor, but ultimately things in Russia are not that cheap if you live here based on salaries. We are, I don't think we're really even gaining that much of a benefit anymore. And supposedly in uh, St. Petersburg, for example, they got rid of the whole migrant labor thing. It's just not an option. Uh, I'm sure it's happening illegally because you do see people of that sort of uh, ilk. That's a fun word, ilk. Uh, walking around uh, from time to time, but uh, officially it's illegal, and I think in one other Russian state it is as well. And um, St. Petersburg tends to be a little bit more pricey than it should be, but it certainly didn't break the bank. And I think that there's a very good chance uh, that uh, this... Um, oh, and one thing, uh, we'll get to calls and questions. So write any questions you want anywhere on Tim Kirby Rush Hardcore. I'll answer them. Uh, we'll do call-ins uh, later. But I do think that... Uh, this dominant view that we need cheap labor, Russia can't survive without cheap labor, we've got to have cheap labor, blah, 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 blah. I think that ultimately that is going to probably change because of this event. It might be a strong enough catalyst that um, the wealthy in Russia may be somewhat, again, forced to, uh, again, sort of uh, bend a bit. Because now, uh, after the West has bailed, uh, the sort of Russian elite has been very much divided into who's over here and who's over there. And uh, the people who are over here, uh, well, although they're still very powerful and very influential, uh, they <laughs> they all have to obey uh, the shining, glowing light of the emperor to some extent. And so I do think that we're going to see some changes to uh, the migration system coming soon. One kind of political uh, or, 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 or legalistic change that's uh, already been thrown out there that I'm uh, not super thrilled with, I think changes to the migration system need to happen. And uh, this whole idea of just letting whoever come here is cheap labor. This whole cheap labor thing also is kind of like a weird um, uh, sort of... <sighs> backdoor, semi-indentured servitude, quasi-slavery kind of thing. Uh, so it's definitely not um, not a very moral thing uh, that we should just allow to happen all the time. Um, and also it builds a lot of resentment because it is, you know, imagine if you were, um, uh, let's just say, let's take a different situation, not Russia. What if you were some guy in India and you're promised, hey, you're going to go to Dubai and you're going to be a construction worker and you're going to be get paid way more money than you could ever dream of uh, working in India and you could send that money back home uh, to your wife and kids. Awesome. You go to Dubai and you're treated like a slave and an animal and there's maybe even a chance you could die of uh, disease from having too many people packed into one room. Uh, what would you feel? Probably a lot of resentment towards the locals in Dubai and their government and so on and so forth, right? So uh, exploitative, exploitative uh, labor practices can lead to a lot of inter-ethnic hatred because human beings are rational and they don't necessarily, you know, the Indian guys uh, that are sleeping in some pit somewhere in Dubai right now uh, are not going to think rationally like, you know, it's not really Arab culture as a whole. It's really specifically these people who are exploiting. No, they're just going to hate everyone. They're going to go back home and they're going to look at the Pakistanis and be like, well, they're kind of like the people who did this to me. So I hate them too. You know, human beings are very irrational. So anyways, uh, yeah. So I, I think that in general, this uh, is just a bad practice. Um, and we'll see if it can be done away with now that um, the, the Russian elite uh, uh, has lost its ability to uh, run away. So we'll see. Um, another thing, again, another legal change that could happen within Russia uh, that, again, I, I'm not super thrilled with is there's already big calls to bring back the death penalty, the good old death penalty, which has been turned on and off like a light switch throughout Russian history, uh, might come back on after this one. Uh, you'd even be surprised that I believe it was during the reign of uh, my one of my favorite Russian uh, empresses, although there aren't too many, um, Tsaritsa's. Um, because her name is all vowels, Anna Ioanovna. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that's a classic. That's fun to say, Anna Ioanovna. Um, during her reign was, I believe, the first ban on the death penalty, which came back later, uh, which is, was banned, I think, uh, again by later Tsars, then brought back, or at least uh, a moratorium put on it. The Soviet Union sort of used it, then didn't use it, and then Putin comes around and says, hey, moratorium, i.e., we could still do it in theory, but we're not going to. 
Um, so I don't quite understand what the Duma is saying about the um, death penalty, which is kind of like still technically legal, but isn't an acceptable like tool to use. So I don't know, but uh, there is definitely, um, let's just say, some outrage and uh, the death penalty uh, maybe in limited form or in a greater form may come back. Uh, although, friends, I don't really like to support the death penalty because uh, it's impossible to correct mistakes, you know. Uh, <laughs> we've heard some stories over the years of people who, uh, got executed that, uh, weren't necessarily guilty. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've kind of, I'd say mixed feelings about that, but I, I think it might be something that for Russia would be just best to just kind of leave it in the past, but it's come and gone before. So, uh, we'll see, uh, where that one goes. Um, and one thing that I think is also uh, an interesting um, shift in attitudes is that throughout, remember, throughout uh, uh, the entire process of sort of like from the after the Maidan to the present, you know, we don't really know uh, everything that happens like on the battlefields, like when people engage or when prisoners are taken or maybe not taken. Uh, we don't see all of that. But Russia has done a very good job of trying to at least officially, you know, order its troops to accept surrender. Uh, to show a lot of video of those being taken um, hostage, even some of the most vile private battalion individuals um, who uh, uh, have made it their life's work to uh, uh, kill Russians, uh, were at least treated somewhat humanely, uh, both arms, both legs still attached when they were uh, traded away uh, back home, uh, so on and so forth. And this has been a pretty consistent, uh, you know, message that Russia has been sending that uh, we're different. Uh, we don't use torture or at least mm, not a lot, you know, <laughs> or at least a very limited or, uh, hey, you know, sometimes people in war die. But if people surrender, we won't shoot them. So on and so forth. OK, so that's kind of the 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 uh, Christian um, good guy, uh, white hat, as our friend Joaquin uh, likes to say, white hat uh, Russia. Uh, that message that it was trying to uh, to send to the world over the last now many years, you know, decade or whatever, um, and especially since the start of the uh, military special military operation. But this time, this time, that is not at all the case. Uh, the no one is shy about uh, showing any of the videos about how much the people who uh, uh, arrested. Uh, the the terrorists and I would say normally I would say suspected but you know this time they really didn't uh, they didn't leave much room for doubt so uh, the pre-convicted uh, terrorists I mean guys they really uh, how, I don't know to say this in a YouTube or maybe family friendly way they put the works to them or I should say maybe in my father's way of speaking they put the works to them right? They really work these guys up. I mean, if you look at them, they are messed up. And the video, I didn't believe it, that uh, the one guy had his ear cut off and they forced him to eat it, and they did. So, uh, it is uh, pretty brutal. It is pretty... Uh, they got that information out of them one way or another. Now, I don't bring this up to be like, oh, that's so cool, we're so badass, because I don't sort of support that type of behavior. In fact, I don't at all. Uh, you know, um... If we're going to have morals, we have to believe in them, even when it is inconvenient. However, uh, when we talk about political analysis, that is a different message. <laughs> that is a very, 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 very different message um, uh, that is being sent than White Hat Russia of, uh, here's your uh, code to call Volga Volga and surrender. We won't do anything to you, even if you don't even speak Russian and you're actually some other ethnicity. We'll let you go and all this other stuff. It's cool, bro. No, no, no. For these guys, no. No. They uh, it's uh, they actually, uh, I think, got it worse uh, than any of the Azov Battalion or Kraken or uh, what are these other ones? Uh, something like Tornado or something. I can't remember them all, but uh, Idar. Uh, but I kind of don't want to know them all. That's that's fine. <laughs> Hopefully uh, those um, terms will fade into history, except for Azov, because it's a big C. But anyways, um, you know, uh, so that is a different message. This is a different logic. And it also sends a signal that, uh, you know, this isn't um, the apparently the, this, uh, the special services here uh, didn't see these people as 
misguided cousins or brothers like they did with a, a lot of the Ukrainian population, but uh, they're just the enemy. They are just, yeah, so uh, very different, very, very different. And I think in a lot of times uh, when we see different ways of behaving in terms of policy, uh, we can see something that um, is, is revealing. And I think that that, the fact that not only did they uh, really give those guys the works uh, uh, in a way that would be, you know, a criminal in a lot of uh, uh, ways, um, not only did they do that, but uh, there's no hiding it. There is no shame. No one cares. And none of those guys are ever going to get punished for it. Uh, I mean, by me, guys, I mean the Russian side. So, yeah, that's uh, another thing that I thought was just very important in a grander political scheme uh, because as I've been accused of uh, by <laughs> many people in my life and especially uh, by the, the ones that have uh, uh, dated me is that I always try and tend to think about the grand and the grand overarching uh, while ignoring uh, the minutia to my own detriment. So uh, forgive me guys if I'm doing exactly the same thing and only talking about the grand effects of this terrorist act uh, rather than focusing on maybe some of the minutia that might actually be um, relevant there. Another thing that came up in the previous conversation that I was having, uh, and again, guys, uh, if you want to write a question, you write it anywhere on Tim Kirby Russia Hardcore. It will appear in a location I call the chat, and I will be able to read it there. We'll be doing call-ins pretty soon, so if you want to call in, now might be a good time. But anyways, uh, when I was on uh, Joe Rose's program just before this, one thing that I think also came uh, that that was also about the differences between people and how they relate to each other is if you remember, of course, for me, it's hard to ever forget. And I never will forget to the day I die uh, the assassination of Daria Dugina. And remember, it's not Dugina, it's Dugina. But anyways, uh, her assassination uh, the uh, s woman who supposedly do it, did it um, pro pro with help was able to escape to the Baltic nations uh, by car. So they weren't uh, the authorities weren't able to react uh, quite fast enough, and this person was actually able to escape. Meaning, the, the probably there's probably a lot of help along the way, and the person that's the main suspect is a uh, Ukrainian citizen. This, that, and the other. Now these guys, the Tajik guys. Uh, their getaway plan from whoever hired them or organized them to just drive to Ukraine, well, that that was just that was just nonsense. This is deep in the war, and like especially after the assassination of Daria, uh, let's just put it this way: the authorities have gotten kind of good with uh, dealing with this sort of stuff, and this idea that they were going to drive a few hours to try to either blow through two block posts because remember russia's two borders is an internal border and an external border and both of them are going to have block posts so they weren't going to get through there so this idea they're going to drive almost all the way to the internal border and then i don't know jog it 30 kilometers in a 21st century universe where there's all sorts of uh uh you know surveillance uh and the entire eye of sauron would be on them <laughs> the entire time so obviously these guys um what I'm trying to say is that they were treated very differently because they were sent there to die. There was no chance. Maybe there's some chance. There was a less than 1% chance that they would have ever actually made it to Kiev or wherever the hell they were going to go alive. It was just not going to happen. They were sent there to die by the people who are going to pay the money who may have not even actually paid them. So uh, what, a, what, a, what a brilliant decision that was. So anyways, that's another thing to think about. Uh, uh, the way that uh, people are uh, treat each other and, and treat each other um, differently. So anyways, we actually do have some comments, which is nice. I appreciate that. Like I said before, I actually hit the record button. I appreciate when I see a few people who are actually uh, waiting here for these live streams. It uh, brings me great joy. So uh, Peter writes, a father who is mourning the death of his children in relation uh, to uh, Putin at the uh, church there. Uh, lighting a candle. Uh, of course, the uh, symbol of a sort of uh, lit candle uh, is a very orthodox thing, and so you'll probably see that all over Russian media. Uh, you probably have seen it uh, whenever there's a tragedy, and especially this tragedy. That is sort of the universal symbol is a burning candle over a dark, potentially black background. Mo, who are they? Police? Russian SWAT teams? Did they say how? Hold on. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is about uh, what I wrote about how there seems to be a, a debate uh, within the, the Russian media itself. And I have seen from Russian alternative media, okay, 
Uh, and sometimes I even within Russia want to listen to the alternative media a little bit more. Um, that said the, that they're true professionals and they acted in perfect unison and they are, you know, expert killers. And, uh, I've also heard, uh, that they're, they're complete chaotic fumbling that they were only able to kill a lot of people because they're all standing next to each other and they had a lot of ammo and they were firing automatic weapons that they were completely, you know, inept this, that, and the other. So the reports, even within Russia of, um, oh gosh, I don't know how to put this, how talented they were. Sorry, it's it's hard to phrase this thing in a very uh, politically correct, respectable way. Um, so their uh, talent level as terrorists is uh, very much up for debate uh, within Russia. So kind of um, uh, an interesting thing. Uh, on the program I was just on, one of the guests actually mentioned that one of the terrorists was able to be taken out because he was unable to, he seemed to be lower in expertise and kind of was unable to properly uh, oop, the camera. Hold on, camera. Come back. He was unable to uh, properly re reload his weapon. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, maybe a sign for the the one side uh, of this argument. But just something to think about that there isn't the, some sort of universal uh, view of this event quite yet within Russia. Okay, <laughs> unlike in the West, where the the one thing that is universal is all the Russians noticed that uh, the U.S. embassy issued a warning not to go to concerts and public events uh, during this uh, time for American citizens, and um, uh, the the fact that as soon as it happened, you know, uh, the entire West was like, it's not Kiev, Kiev's not related, not connected. <laughs> before before they do anything, uh, amazing, amazing. So, yeah, but um, anyways, uh, someone uh, doubts the authenticity of the uh, mourning of Vladimir Putin. So Bolshoi transfer uh, or the big transfer 1984 says it's just TV, man. Anna writes, even my friends cannot decide whether the terrorists acted clumsily or chaotically or were professionals, opposing points of view. And uh, yeah, well, I can tell you, yeah, Anna, that, um, you know, <sighs> Anyone who you, I'll put it this way, when we had, we had tried to get uh, this one program going where we tried to actually do like some, uh, some stuff with tactical with guns, I'll put it this way. It is really hard, unlike in video games, when you're on the move to like reload one of a shotgun that uh, is a, like a, the, the, the pump shotgun. Obviously they, they didn't use those, but it is actually really takes a lot of practice to get the muscle memory to do stuff like that. So if they were able to sort of like continuously reload on the move, um, I would say that would be an, an indi indicator of professionalism uh, and especially keeping the gun up. Uh, that's another thing where uh, your average person is not used to constantly being in this position uh, from which your arms get tired, but it's the proper position to be in. Uh, I would say that that'd probably be another telling sign of uh, how, how they hold the guns and all that. So, um, let's see, Kathy, I think it may be that some people at some point chose to give themselves over completely to evil. I still pray for miracles and that they would repent before they die. Um, I, uh, you know what, to be honest, one of the things about the guys who did this uh, attack, well, first off, they all speak Russian uh, very, 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 very badly, like really badly, if at all. Um, so so, so that's, that, that's uh, one thing. But they seem almost stupid to the point of being mentally handicapped, at least in the way that their facial features look, or it could have just been the terror of being apprehended or the fact that they got, you know, uh, the snot beat out of them. So I don't know, but they all seem to be <sighs> dim bulbs on some level. So I don't know. But being dim doesn't mean that you're necessarily physically inept, uh, as we all know. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the world to be a coordinated guy. Physically coordinated, I mean. So who knows? Uh, the Russians with Attitude guys have a very thoughtful commentary on all of this. And it's on their Patreon, which might be banned in Russia. So I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, anyways... Uh, Putin is indeed like a father. I feel this personally, even though he is only four and a half years older than me. My own father was strong, caring, and competent. When some crisis would happen, when we were in distress, Dad would arrive on the scene, and immediately we felt re relieved. We felt instinctively that there was always a limit to how much disaster could befall us as long as Dad was there. They kind of go on for a long time, but they say that uh, God help us, not just Russia, but all humanity, 
when he is no longer on the scene, God grant him many years. So yeah, we definitely need uh, the boss to live uh, till the end of this next term and long enough for him to promote uh, the next candidate who will carry on his uh, mission. So he's got to live uh, six more years, six and a half. So um, let's see, we need to make a video game about liberating Ukraine and Kosovo. Maybe that could be two different games. Maybe another one about fighting NATO-sponsored terrorists. Uh, to be honest, uh, unfortunately... Oh my god, I forgot your name, and that's bad, because you've commented a lot here. Why doesn't it show your name? No. Uh, I want to say... Mm, hold on. I hope this doesn't appear on the screen. Oh, okay, it's Nicholas. Well, Nicholas, um, I would actually agree with you, but dude, try convincing people in Russia with money to do any sort of ideological project that is do that's in the entertainment industry. Try it. I've been trying for a decade, not happening. Uh they will they will fight to the bitter end to make sure that Russia's interaction with the outside world is 100% official, only suits and ties, only hors d'oeuvres only uh, going to the Bolshoi theater to look at ballet. Remember they sent Tucker Carlson to the theater to the Bolshoi Theater to uh, get him connected with Russian culture. Get the F out of here. Absolutely ridiculous. But unfortunately, uh, Nicholas, I uh, really agree with you uh, on, on maybe maybe some of the nuances, not so much because an American, uh, I can't make a video game where Americans die, but making uh, games with a very pro-Russian slant and something that really shows off the character of Russia would be amazing, uh, but uh, try to get it done. <laughs> that's the hard part. So, da, 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 da. Lauren writes, maybe that's the problem with thinking that they have to be liberated. Ukraine has the government that society wants, and the inhabitants of Kosovo do not want to have anything to do with Serbia. The same happened with the Baltic. There's a big problem in the definition of sovereignty. It seemed that according to, to convenience of each one, Donbass decided to be part of Russia, the rest prefer to be Banderist. Uh, they must let Donbass go, and I think Russia must also let Ukraine go. Uh, Lauren, Russia has no problem with letting Western Ukraine go, that's for sure. Especially if it's going to be cut up between the Poles and the Hungarians, the Romanians, and whoever else. Uh, I don't think that there's any uh, problem with that. But again, when you're getting in this whole, like, must let go, and you're kind of almost um, conflating, like, emotional state with <laughs> the governmental state and uh, international relations, and uh, that is a pathway to inaccuracy. Okay, um, let's see, Brent, who do you believe controls Alex Jones? <laughs> oh, that must must be a conversation about something else. Uh, I've not seen any evidence that anyone controls him. Okay, uh, I love Alex Jones. I, I kind of make, uh, sometimes it seems like I might be making fun of him, but I envy him. I love the way Alex Jones talks. I love his energy. Uh, my favorite thing that Alex Jones does that I can't quite do a Im good imitation of is, you know, uh, when someone like sort of like humble brags, you know, where they'll be like, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, some guy, I don't know, not me. Let's just say my son, you know, I only run the, I only run the, you know, the 40 meter in like five seconds as, as an 11 year old, but whatever, you know, it's no big deal. Right. Like humble brag. And then Alex Jones will be like, well, you know, I've just revealed that it was a satanic conspiracy 10 years ago. But I mean, you know, you know. so I, I love when he does that. The humble brag about but he's a humble brag about like revealing a satanic conspiracy or uh, the, the dark underground networks. I mean, it's it's it's, it's obvious. You know, I, I love when he does that. I, I wish I had um, like uh, some sort of um, like Alex Jones best of humble bragging. Uh, it would be amazing. Uh, the powers that be in the West must act like they believe their own stupid propaganda. Yes, Christopher, yes. And this is why, Christopher, this is why you're one of the moderators on my channel, because you get it. Uh, yes, that is it. It is, again, like I, I was even mentioning earlier today on Joe Rose's program, the real terror of American society is when we see something written on a piece of paper, we do it. And that is exactly it. Because on the piece of paper over there, you know, in those uh, three-letter organizations in the deep state, it's got to have regime change in Russia. Uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich is unpopular. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had a bunch of other little talking points there. Yep. They have to believe it. Because the uh, mainstream media printed it. 
remember how, how many times you've heard from everyone. You've heard it from Tucker Carlson. You've heard it from Alex Jones, who we've just mentioned. You've heard it from everyone who's been on Judge Napolitano's uh, very diverse panel of guests. You've probably heard it from guests on my program. We have a lot of um, entities that are both governmental and deep state-ish that have a lot of effect on the uh, media. You know, some people say, was it that uh, the, Wa the Wall Street... Or no, no, no. The New York Times is the mouthpiece of the State Department, and the Washington Post is like the mouth the piece for like the CIA. I always forget it, but it's basically a list. But anyways, uh, a lot of these organizations get journalists to write things, and then they take the things that are lies that are written, and those become official truths for the people who made the order. And it creates this cycle of freaking madness. So thank you, Christopher, for understanding that. Uh, you deserve a gold star. Go out and buy some stickers today and put a few on your uh, report card. <laughs> uh, wrong think is heavily punched in the West. They will continue to do violent and stupid crap to try to achieve a Russian uh, color coup. Yep. Uh, I think U.S.-style cheap third worlder immigration may end after this. This is a good thing. Keep Russia Russian. You know, uh, carefully vet immigrants. Have an actual immigration program and actually choose who comes. Yeah, yeah, it has to be become uh, a more of a selective process here. Uh, and I hope that that will become the case after this is over. Because this whole thing of just sort of leaving it in the hands of the police and a bureaucratic checklist is not creating um, the type of immigration that I think people want. So... I agree with the plan to attract only the best of the best, but what about keeping Russian brains and wealth in Russia first? Emigration is bleeding the country. Well, uh, in what way? So here's the thing. Uh, if people are leaving, why? What's the problem? What is the the, the real uh, issue? Because we cannot trap people inside of Russia like they did in the Soviet Union. That did not work. And in fact, it kind of created a cult of being obsessed with leaving. Because, you know, sometimes when you ban something... That makes it all the more enticing. So, uh, what would people do, EJ, to to keep uh, young Russian people inside the country? Um, yeah. The chase for weak labor, or maybe cheap labor, is destroying the country. Russian workers are paid very low salaries in factories because Central Asian workers are taking such salaries. And EJ, uh, I would agree with you, and that's the same thing that happens in America and the whole world, because it essentially means that whatever market you're in, you, as a normal sort of laborer type of person, be you a welder or a construction worker or whatever, you then have to compete with people from a much cheaper market who are also kind of, like I said, half-indentured servants kind of slaves, and that drives everyone's wages down. Of course, when everyone's wages kind of go up, then there's more expenses, and I, like I said, if we have to only pay local people to build things in Russia, it'll become even more expensive, but maybe it is worth it. And in fact, it probably is. So there you go. Or <laughs> one of the benefits of Russia is uh, if you're a citizen, you can just build your own house yourself. That's a big difference. So uh, maybe the amount of people who'd want to do their own construction might increase. Who knows? Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, EJ, uh, really interesting comments. Good comments, by the way. Good stuff. I like that. Katapoos. They don't make it to factories since the factory owners wouldn't want that don't they don't quite know what you mean i'm sorry so wealthy russians are the cause of open border policies and industrial level naturalization well yeah well who's the advocate for all the people from central asia coming it's either your uh we have to destroy it's the, the globalist agenda where we have to mix people from all over the world right so it's either the globalist agenda but then again it's interesting the globalist agenda in russia doesn't open the doors to africa south america and wherever else you know it's just connected to like central asia which used to be a part of russia um yeah and so uh yeah so who's who's the advocates for this the people who employ all of them the people who employ all these uh, millions of uh, cheap migrant laborers, they're the ones who are the advocates for this. Go on. You need cheap labor if you have something to sell to the world. I don't think natural resources count. Until then, you need innovators, developers, etc. Uh, Mo, you're wrong. A lot of things are produced in Russia. All sorts of stuff are produced in Russia, all over the country. Your view of Russia is very 1990s. EJ, most companies want to extract huge private profits, even if it is not a national economic priority. Yes, but who cares? That's the purpose of the government, to come in with a hammer and, uh, let's just say, make people patriotic. <laughs> or make entities, not people, entities, 
make them patriotic or behave in a patriotic way. Uh, businesses are merely entities that follow uh, the the rule set that they're given to an extent, and uh, if you allow them to be to behave that way, then they will. If it's in their interests, if it's profitable, so you have to make it unprofitable or very scary to do so. Uh, Christopher, it would take me one hour plus to find the old links to substantiate my opinion that's about something else never mind a lot of russian economy looks like a gilded age capitalism to me says ej okay how is russia similar then with well, the gilded age is your sort of after the reconstruction of the civil war uh up into the great depression right so in what way does russia resemble uh this sort of turn of the century united states uh, I am curious myself and why, uh, because, uh, ultimately the, um, uh, the great De depression was caused by the, uh, a liquidity crisis as in, uh, there like, wasn't enough money as people started to pull their money from banks. There just wasn't enough. Uh, there was a, essentially, uh, there was basically like this uh, huge bubble of how much money there should have been versus how much there was. Is that the case in Russia? I'm not quite sure that that is the case, but whatever. Uh, the soldier who cut the ear saw his body cam footage. That little puke slowly beheaded one of the victims. Well, then there you go. And I uh, guess, like I said, Christopher, that guy, he ain't getting punished. <laughs> They've already made that clear. He's, uh, he might even get some sort of national hero uh, honors. So, yeah. Uh, cheap labor degrades. Okay, J. Oh wait, wait. Oh, that's. Uh, excuse me, Jason. You're not EJ. You are a completely different human being. Your icon is just the same color. Automatically generated icon. So forgive me. Cheap labor denigrates a nation's security by creating divides in income and interests. The economic goals of good leadership should be to create the strongest, most productive, robust middle class possible. Take care of the middle class first. Well, I don't know if it's the, the job of the government to make sure that there's the strongest middle class. It's more to kind of keep the state going. In whatever fashion that might be. And also the idea of what the middle class is, uh, is kind of uh, different, you know. Uh, would the middle class then be serfs in a medieval society? Uh, so, I don't know. That's very much America. That's like mid-20th century Americanizing the universe. So, I don't know about that. But, uh, yeah, migrant labor has a real bad effect on society. One does not just simply walk into Ukraine, says Christopher. Yes, <laughs> you do not, especially when the entire uh, state apparatus of Russia is hunting you down. Tim, who is not me. I'm a different Tim. Uh, Tim with the blue icon. Once they determine who is ultimately responsible for the attack, what happens next? Could it be the, the catalyst for World War III? No, because the United States uh, government, or I should say the deep state, has already committed horrible crimes uh, against Russians, including the Biolab Network to exterminate all of them down to the last one. Well, that would include me, because I'm Slavic, so it would kill me, too, if they made some sort of anti-Slavic virus. So, <laughs> that red line was crossed a while ago. Uh, and also, this was probably the first channel you heard about that. That was probably one of the only news story that I ever broke, because, uh, let's just say, one of my uh, good friends was like, I don't want to go to the mainstream media with this, pal. You expose it. Okay. Um, do you think the West was surprised by the 87% vote? Officially, they were shocked. Unofficially, no. Uh, Irina Balina. How come we relaxed so much uh, security when the security is not ready? Taking into consideration the size of the building. Uh, Irina, this is, a, this is the, the typical question that all women ask. Where was the security? Irina, this is something that uh, is very hard to explain to all human beings. But for women, it's even harder. And I'm not being sexist. I'm just saying it is. Just like with me, if you put me in charge of a daycare, the kids are going to, it's going to, they're going to all have to see psycho, psychotherapists because it'll be so awful because it'll turn into some sort of like weird military, right? Men uh, suck with taking care of people and suck with helping people and suck with caring. Okay. We suck, suck, suck at it. All right. So there you go. Uh, the genders are different. And one thing women are not good at is understanding that there is no security. We are fucked. There is no way to create some sort of complete and total uh, mass security web to deal with people who are willing to die in order to kill other people. 
as soon as someone is willing to die to plant some sort of explosive device or kill someone with a knife or whatever, there is nothing you can do to stop them. Okay. And uh, whatever security measures they had, some of the security guards did a good job of getting people out of there because it was a bit maze like on the inside. But anyways, uh, there is no security solution to this sort of thing. There's only punishment. And the Russian government did a good job of punishing them and is probably continuing to punish them every evening. So there you go. Uh, point number two from Irina. Is it true the Canadian family with many children in Nizhny Novgorod is kicked out of Russia for not speaking Russian? Uh, it would seem not, but I am not an expert in their destiny. I actually do not know them personally. I only know two more who knows them. Christopher, I missed the first 20 minutes. Please reload. No, not because you're a bad person, but because that's not the way I do things. Uh, the other Christopher, ain't no safety anywhere unless you uh, keep your rifle there. And again, I've mentioned Joe Rose today. You should all go subscribe to his channel. It is called Expat American. It is fantastic. It is very interesting. Joe is a charming gentleman. His wife Svetlana is lovely and they do great work. Uh, and they have a bunch of kids, which is also a major life accomplishment, and that's great. And on his show, Not With Me, a few days ago, uh, they had a, or no, it wouldn't be a few days ago, it'd be yesterday, because a few days ago was the uh, attack itself. Uh, he had a discussion um, with his guest about some Second Amendment issues. And again, in Russia, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to let this one slide and uh, not point out the fact that, you know, if uh, concealed carry was a, maybe a more legitimate factor in Russia... The overwhelming majority of people who won't commit crimes might have been able to stop uh, these uh, terrorists. And I remind you that apparently one of them was stopped by one guy who was willing to charge unarmed at one of them while he was fumbling to reload. So you see what I mean? Uh, it's uh, something, so it, we, it's another uh, thing for, that's food for thought. I think the entire Ukrainian crisis has been food for thought to think about how we in Russia relate the state to the population and uh, uh, to what extent is our personal safety, our responsibility, how do we do things, what is the nature of man, all that other stuff. But unfortunately, those deeper philosophical questions are not going to get addressed uh, that is going to just keep getting swept under the rug for all eternity uh, because I think uh, it's awkward and uh, because of the influence of the Soviet Union is still quite living among us. And that good old Soviet attitude of uh, whatever happens, call the police. Mm, that's, that's not good, but it's, 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 it's there. Um, so someone uh, named Max is saying that the uh, ca Canadian family in Nizhny Novgorod is building their farm and that uh, they, uh, everything for them is in order. That He said it more bluntly and in Russian, but that's my translation. Deal with it. Um, Abibas, Abibas, my friend, is here. Yes, Abibas, another long-time loyal supporter. Unless there's a significant presence of armed guards, there's little they can do against an armed gang in a surprise attack. Yes, again, going back to Arena, what are you going to do about a guy with an assault rifle when you've got nothing? You're not going to do much. Uh, it's less than a building problem, more of a general regional security problem. Yeah, yeah. Tim, how do you enjoy living in Russia compared to the United States? Uh, Tim is asking, well, Tim, I wish you could be more specific because... Uh... You know, that's kind of something where maybe that would be a good topic for another live stream, but this one's kind of dark, my friend, and I, I don't really, today, like, normally I don't care if this program is completely off the wall and it goes from, uh, like, freaking, we're, we're, we're talking about Nietzsche and the freaking um, absolute and total meaninglessness of existence and then talking about, like, how Russian ice cream is really good. Normally, I don't mind that, but today I think it's a little on the disrespectful side to, to go into these sort of, like, uh, lifestyle kind of issues. So how about this, Tim? Although it'd be really good if you gave a donation, but you don't have to. I'm going to forward your message to my saved messages. And I'm also going to open my uh, thing where I can get donations. If someone wants to make a donation and your bank will let you, then we'll do that uh, because some donations are always in order, but you don't have to. It's not mandatory. Where is my page? Okay, so we'll do that. Again, let's uh, get up my thing. So if you want to feel free to make a donation. Okay, there you go. So... 
It's post on the main channel. You'll see it uh, and uh, enjoy. So if you want to. But Tim, that's a good topic about how I personally may be, because for some reason, this is another thing I don't understand why so many people are always interested in what I personally think. Uh, why does that matter? I actually think a lot of the things I have to say are a lot higher quality, more interesting, more relevant, and should live on and have more value than I do as a person. I think as a person, I don't matter whatsoever, and it's a lot of the things I say in my views that matter, but uh, it seems like a lot of people think the opposite. So uh, thank you for the compliment, but you're wrong. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we'll talk about this. How do I enjoy living in Russia versus the United States? Uh, maybe next time. Or maybe I could do a two-parter today. How about that, Tim? Uh, I want to do a two-parter today. We'll deal with this dark topic, and we'll actually do it today. Two-parter. Oh, my gosh. Do I actually have a drink here on the floor? I do. I have I have floor juice. So we'll do a two-parter. Stay tuned, Tim. Uh, maybe five or ten minutes, and we'll get going. Karapuz, before the Reds, handguns were readily available, as were rifles. And uh, Russians didn't kill themselves very much with them, did they? Uh, Christopher Barrett, Russia will leave you the F alone, which is very nice. That is very nice. Uh, so anyways, no one wants to call in. Uh, no one wants to call in, which is cool. And uh, we just kind of got a request for another topic. So we're going to do this end of the serious live stream and the more casual live stream starting right now.